next on All Access. It's about collaboration, not only collaboration on the coaching staff, but collaboration uh, with the scouting staff. That's what we're trying to build here. In terms of football character, like he's everything that we're looking for. I do think at the end of the day, he'll be able to enter our program and do well. I just want to win. That's the main thing. Very competitive, um, and I want to win the right way. There's a lot of change, and I'm excited to be a part of that change and hopefully lead these guys and build a little culture here that we can uh, carry for years on end. Off-season? What off-season? The Patriots New Era is off and running. Hello and welcome to Patriots All Access presented by Geico. I'm Steve Burton. A little over eight weeks have passed since Gerard Mayo was named head coach of the New England Patriots. Since that time, coaching staffs have been filled, personnel meetings intensified, and player movement both on and off the team has occurred. Dan Roach fills us in on a busy time here in Foxborough. The winter winds of change have come whipping through Foxborough as the calendar approaches spring. And I'm very happy with the coaching staff that we have. Gerard Mayo has assembled his coaching staff, which will be noticeably larger than in the past. There'll be some familiar faces with new titles, such as defensive coordinator Demarcus Covington. Good base, good footwork. There'll also be many new faces, from three-time Super Bowl champ Dante Hightower to special teams coordinator Jeremy Springer to offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt. It's going to be a fresh start for everybody. Um, you know, I've talked to a couple guys already. to coming in with a clean slate. With the NFL draft just over a month away, director of scouting Elliot Wolf provided some clarity at the Combine as to who will be handing in the card when the Patriots are on the clock. It's going to be a collaborative effort, Coach Mayo, myself, Matt Groh, the whole staff. Um, at the end of the day, somebody has to, has to make that pick, and, and that'll be myself. The winds of March also bring player movement, both in and out of the building. Among those re-signing, on offense, Michael Wenu, Kendrick Bourne, and Hunter Henry. On defense, Anthony Jennings and Josh Uche. And I feel like it's something I just want to continue to be a part of, and um, I think it's just going to be great. I think the future is bright. I'm just happy to be home. and get back to doing what I what I do best. Among the new players coming to Foxborough, a familiar face, quarterback Jacoby Brissett, as well as tight end Austin Hooper, third down back Antonio Gibson, and linebacker Sione Takitaki. And among the players departing, quarterback Mac Jones, who was traded to Jacksonville in exchange for a sixth round draft pick. With the third pick. As for the process, free agency is a part of roster building, but Long-term success, according to the Patriots, comes from the next step. To sustain greatness or to, to get back to winning ways, we have to draft well, and we gotta be ready to pivot as soon as the free agency's over. This year's NFL Draft is the most anticipated draft in the Robert Kraft ownership era. In fact, at number three overall, it's the highest pick they've ever had under Kraft. Yes, April 25th is going to be a special night. For Patriots All Access, I'm Dan Roach. All right, Dan Roach, thank you very much. And our Bob's Discover Furniture Studios with Mike Reese and Paul Barillo. Good to see you guys. Great, Steve. You too, Steve. First wave of free agency has already come and gone. No surprises, no fireworks. What'd you think? Definitely no fireworks. Um, and I'm mildly surprised by that, Mike. I didn't think we would get a repeat of 2021. I think sort of time has told us that's really not the, the best way to go about it. But I did feel there could be an individual or two mm -hmm. that they would strongly target and, and land. And, you know, obviously that to me was Calvin Ridley. Yeah. They reportedly were really, uh, you know, interested in bringing him, interested in giving big bucks and got outbid. So that was unfortunate Here's to me. Here's how I would sum up the dynamic to me. They have a lot of work to do. Okay. They have a lot of holes. And some of their best players were coming up on the end of their contracts. So if they didn't re-sign right. their own players, they were going to have even more holes than they already had to start with. So they're almost treading water, is what I would say at this time. Mac Jones out, Jacoby Brissett in. Yeah, not overly surprising. You know, I don't think either way, Steve. I, I think with Mac Jones, I think the time had sort of come. I think you kind of owed it to him, too. You know, not, not only he was struggling here, but I think that he wanted out of here, Mike, right? So I thought it was a, a, a good move by the team to sort of let him go. Fresh start, yep. needed for all. 
Jacoby Brissett, good bridge with a rookie quarterback. All right, you guys. Well, Mike, you bring up an excellent point because we'll be talking about rookie quarterbacks later on in the show. We'll be back more Patriots All Access right after this. You're watching Patriots All Access. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Bank of America, official bank of the New England Patriots. By Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. We always talk about tough, smart, dependable football players. Um, I also think accountability is one of those things that uh, we really have to, to nail home. Now, look, you look at our roster right now, who knows where, where it will end up in the summertime. But at the same time, you know, during the offseason program, you can kind of get a good gauge of the toughness of your team. As the league year officially kicked off this week, several Patriots veterans chose to re-sign with the team. I'm excited about kind of the new era and being a part of that. There's a lot of change, and I'm excited to be a part of that change and hopefully meet these guys and build a little culture here that we can uh, carry for years on end. The Patriots were the organization that gave me a chance in the NFL. The New England Patriots select Josh Uche, linebacker, Michigan. And it's like family. Um, it feels like home, and um, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than home. Well, the club added new players at the start of free agency. When I was here before, I'm 31 now, so uh, definitely probably the oldest in my room. But, uh, you know, I'm excited. You know, a good opportunity and uh, ready to get this thing going. It's crazy. I never thought I would be here. Uh, they have a history of, of, of winning and, um, you know, and being at that, at that top spot where I want to be. So, uh, you know, I'm glad to be here. I know that the tradition is great, and I heard the fans are really great. Back to All Access presented by GEICO. The annual combine in Indianapolis gave us an opportunity to see and hear from some of the new decision makers for the Patriots. Let's go behind the scenes at the combine presented by Gillette Labs. I just want to win. That's the main thing. Very competitive. Um, and I want to win the right way with people, with working with Gerard and, and the staff, and really just determining how we can just get this thing rolling in the right direction. Let's do the uh, Rise of Zadish position. Our February meetings with the scouts, all the area scouts and national scouts came in and you know, eight, nine days, and it's been a lot of work, it's been fun. You're one of the few people maybe in the building that have had experiences outside of the building, Elliot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, and it's it's from Green Bay, it's from Cleveland, it's from Coach Belichick, it's from it's from everywhere, everyone I've talked to, everywhere I've been, and we, we try to, you know, just kind of marry up all those thoughts and ideas and, and determine what we can do that that will end up being the, the way for the Patriots moving forward. Yeah, have a lot of respect for Elliot. He obviously has a, a, a great pedigree um, in terms of his dad and has learned a lot of football. Um, he had a tremendous career and it was always great, you know, unfortunate for me being able to go into the office when I was young and learn from him and just kind of be a fly on the wall. You know, I'll, I'll always go to, to him with questions about not specific players, but just, you know, kind of ways to work through different uh, areas of adversity that I might have. Similar philosophies, draft and develop, you know, try to try to get weapons, uh, work backwards, you know, start with, all right, here are the really good players and then work backwards in terms of like, all right, maybe this guy doesn't fit or that guy doesn't fit. It's, it's about going through the process and determining, you know, who can really help us and who we want to add to our building. You know, I love the game of football and I want to coach after I'm, after I'm done playing. Yeah, I've been here. Yeah, I was here as a player, obviously, which is, <laughs> which is totally different. But uh, yeah, I've been here probably two or three times as a coach. Yeah, just being able to see the guys, you know, but there's also an opportunity here, which I think is important to get those 15 minute uh, formal interviews uh, going. So formal interview, we have 45 that we're allowed to have. They're 18 minutes each and it's a, at a specific time. And each team gets an interview suite where we're able to 
bring them in, talk to them for that a lot of time, and then they're out. It's about collaboration, not only collaboration on the coaching staff, but collaboration uh, with the scouting staff. That's what we're trying to build here. Uh, we have a long way to go, but I like where we, where we started. Yeah, I think there's a couple good positions in this draft. The tackles deep. You know, more and more college teams play with four and five receivers, so there's a lot of receivers. Um, so there's probably different avenues for us to make our team better based on what's available in the draft. Uh, historically, yeah, this is a pretty strong quarterback class. It's the most important position in football, and it's a, it's a position where they need to essentially elevate the players around them. And I think their leadership, their talent, um, their dependability on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, their intelligence is really the primary factors that would lead to their ability to do that. Look, quarterback, obviously you want the, the physical assets, right? The big arm, the mobility, all those things. But it's really about the competitiveness and just that nature. The good quarterbacks that I've been around have you know, taken big hits and gotten back up. And so you want that toughness, especially out of your quarterback room. Yeah, I actually just wanted to get together to catch up on some of these interviews that you all have had. I think, you know, between formals, you know, the windows are super short. We don't really have a ton of time to talk about the players. And then informals, I haven't been around between, you know, the three of you, Josh, JT, and Alex. Hearing his story for the first time, knowing that my first time ever meeting him, he's not in my area, he's in your area, JT. So that crossover was good. Really nice kid. He means well, he's tough, he's countable. I just, I think it's really a project. I loved him. In terms of football character, like he's everything that we're looking for. I do think at the end of the day, um, he'll be able to, you know, enter our program and do well. He was just everything, like extremely charismatic, infectious, great dude. Once he got to whatever that season was, 21, was really the one where he's like, okay, I think I can play in the NFL. Uh, did you watch films? Yeah, it wasn't good enough. You know, he puts in a lot of time, a lot of effort. But ultimately, like, I think there's definitely a ceiling there. Really limited for a guy who's played as much as he had. It's really important for us to, to get face to face and ask him some of the questions that we had going in. And it's been great, especially we're able to watch film with him, do whatever that we want to spend in the allotted time that we have. And um, we get to some pointed questions. So we have a plan going in and we really get more familiar with some of the, the questions that we need to answer. We have some holes on the roster. We have some good players on the roster as well, but we have some holes and, and we're gonna we're gonna do what's best and, and try to get this thing going. I think everyone realizes that we'll have uh, disagreements, but hopefully at the end of those meetings, we're able to come to some type of common ground. You don't always have to agree with me, I may not agree with you, but at the same time, you would like us all to be on the same page. Patriots All Access is brought to you by Cross Insurance, the official insurance broker of the New England Patriots. By Bank of America, official bank of the New England Patriots. Welcome back to Patriots All Access in our Bob's Just Conference Studios, back with Mike Reese and Paul Perillo you know what they're doing, or do we know what they're doing? Because you know Jacoby Brissett is here, you know Mac is out. Has that telegraphed that they're taking a quarterback? I think it has. Um, I think all signs certainly indicate that, Mike. I think if you had signed maybe a higher level starter or a guy really looking to establish himself as a starter, I think the question would be a little bit bigger. With, with Jacoby Brissett, I think you know what you have. Mm -hmm. I think all signs point to they're looking quarterback at three. To me, the odds are obviously higher that they will take a quarterback. I think the danger for them, guys, is you don't want to just, like, put the answer before you go through the process. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. Like, you have to make sure you're not just taking a quarterback because people say you should take a quarterback. you got to fall in love with these guys. Right. And if you don't, to me, have the courage to say, well, you know what, as much as we want the quarterback, we got a long way to go here and a big building process, and maybe you, you try another option. So who are they falling in love with? We figure Caleb Williams is already going to be gone. I so agree. There's two. Yeah, it's that. two. It's, it's Daniels or May to me. Those are the two guys. 
Uh, and it, it, you know, the more time goes by, the more it looks like Washington likes Daniels. So uh, I do like a lot of things about Drake May, but I couldn't agree more with what Mike said. And I think that bears repeating because if they don't feel the same way about Drake May or Jaden Daniels mm -hmm. as a lot of other people do, it's a big mistake to just say, well, we have to have a quarterback there. How many times are we going to be in this spot? you got to move on, and you got to find someone else that you do have conviction in. But I do like a lot of the traits about both Daniels and May, and I would take either one. Okay, so yeah. go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to build on it and say, like, the upside of both of them is so intriguing. So mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels, when you watch part of him, you're like, that could be Lamar Jackson. And you say, why wouldn't you want Lamar Jackson? Drake May, when you watch him, you look at it and say, that could be Josh Allen. Why wouldn't you want Josh Allen? At the same time, mm -hmm. there's like a, a, a part that f scares me with all these young quarterbacks because I see Zach Wilson, right. you know, number two right. a couple right. of years ago. I see Mac Jones. I see Justin Fields. I see Trey Lance. And it just reminds me, like, let's slow down here right. and make sure Steve, you're dotting your eyes. Let him bum me out, though. He's right. <laughs> okay. Like, you do. You could see. You could. Right. You know, they were calling Josh Wilson. The, you know. The, I mean, uh, Zach Wilson, the Mormon Mahomes. Remember. Right, right, you know, right. out of BYU. I see all those things. But I'm going to look at the another draft. I'm going to look at Joe Burrow Love and him. Justin okay. Herbert. Oh, I get it. I get it. I'm going to say, but both one of you those guys, guys is going to come here. <laughs> I'm not going to look at those guys. I want you guys to look at a weapon. Can we look at a weapon? Yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay, think about his dad, how he raised this guy. Yeah. This guy doesn't drop passes, okay? If he's the next Randy Moss, what are we doing? So here's my, my question was, what do you think Marvin Harrison would have been like if Curtis Painter was his quarterback all those years Ooh. in Indianapolis? Yeah, yeah. It'd be Garrett Wilson. Yeah. You know, with the Jets, who was an unbelievable wide receiver, who's been really good for New York for two years, and they can't win any games because they don't have anybody to get on the ball. Now, we know that Aaron Rodgers got hurt, Last year, that's their plan. But that would be my concern with Marvin Harrison. Not his talent. I think he's a terrific player. I think there are a lot of really strong receivers in this group. I think you can get a really good one later on if you take the quarterback I first. think Harrison's a cut above the rest of the receivers. He, he, he probably is, Steve. You're and, right. And he also solidifies the need that you were trying to fill with Calvin Ridley. Like, you took a big swing for Calvin Ridley. Right. Marvin Harrison can be that guy. But to Paul's point, and this is the push and pull, it's like the quarterback's so important like, do you have the conviction to say, you know, really like in May? Mm -hmm. Now it's Harrison and Brissett. Like, that's a difference. Okay, uh, one we last bummed thing. them out. I know because <laughs> oh, you I'm, I'm, I'm so high on this guy. <laughs> now, now he's going to talk about trading down. Exactly. <laughs> They're not going to do that, are they? I'm going to stun you here, Steve. I, I, I am the most anti-trade down guy you'll ever find. I wouldn't be opposed to it if. We go back to Mike's point. If you're not in love with one of those two quarterbacks, yeah. move down, pick up some, some extra picks both this year and probably next, yeah. depending on how far down you go, you have a lot of holes to fill. I'm going to go with the Mike Reese theory here. A lot of holes to fill. And you can really say, and here's the, the bottom, like to me the big picture is this is going to be a multi-year process. Right. I, I know everyone that. wants the Patriots it's a to journey. go from 4-13 to 13-4. and four. They're going to need a couple drafts. I'm just being realistic. And, you know, like... If you can set yourself up with multiple number ones and still have a number one this year and plug some of these many holes you have, it's worth considering. Marvin Harrison, Jr. Thank you, guys. Love the conviction. All right. That will do it for this edition of Patriots All Access. For Mike Beeson, Paul Brewer, I'm Steve Burton. Have a great week, everybody.